Ms. Marino joins us now live with how this will impact residents and businesses. Well, hey there, Jen. Good evening. You know, as the city of Tampa grows, obviously the noise is going to grow too. One of the main issues, though, that has been brewing here for years, it's behind me here. It is between the bar right here, Park and Rec, and then the residents who live above it. They say it is simply too loud. It's a sure sign of a growing city. Business is booming, and according to some, so is the noise. We simply seek balance between a business's right to make the noise and our right to live without it. It's a balance city council members have tried to find for years. If you live there, you're going to hear it. If you don't live there, you're not going to hear it. That's the problem. In Channelside, this has mainly become an issue between residents living in the towers of Channelside and the nearby bar Park and Rec. Terrible. Every single night. You hear this subwoofer. Larry Rinderconnect lives in the towers and has fought for years for a noise ordinance. He says the loud music and bass from Park and Rec is keeping him up at all hours of the night. What affects me is the hmm, 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 hmm of the subwoofers every night that they're open. That's unacceptable. And today, council members sided with residents like Rinderconnect voting to amend the noise ordinance for the channel district. This means noise and channel side will no longer be measured by decibels. Instead, it will be determined by plainly audible. That means if it sounds too loud to authorities, a business could be cited. Rinder Connect hopes this will give him and other residents some relief. Where you have a residential community that was there first, then Park and Rec knew what they were getting into when they moved into the community, and they should not be allowed to come in and disturb us. Now, we reached out to Park and Rec for comment. We have not heard back. As far as enforcement goes, we are told police have to issue a five-minute warning first. After that, they can issue a citation. Jen? Well, Melissa, this ordinance has passed, but when does it actually go into effect? City officials, they say they're still looking into that, but as of now, the mayor needs to sign off on it, and as soon as she does, we're told it will likely take effect. Melissa Marino, live in